Welcome to Rooting on Your Routing. Two, four, six, eight. What do we appreciate? Routing. Yay, 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 routing. Tony, what are you doing? Hey, David. I'm just getting ready for our presentation where we're trying to encourage people about how easy it is to use SOLIDWORKS routing. Is that not how you think we should do it? That is not how this works. Not how any of this works. Okay, so what do you suggest? I see so many people that are scared to start using SOLIDWORKS routing. I think it's pretty easy, but then again, I'm biased. It does take some work to get started, but it seems like once you get started, then it isn't that bad. What have you heard are some things that make routing hard? I guess the first thing that scares people away is 3D sketching. Yeah, but even if you have to sketch the route manually, the main thing you have to remember is to hit the tab key to change directions. The thing is, that the auto route tool does a pretty good job of coming up with possible solutions for the route that work most of the time. There have been some nice enhancements over the years to improve the quality of the suggested route. Well, let me show you how it works. So how do we start? Well, I'm going to open up this assembly and we'll take a look. There are options for routing where we can automatically start a route by dragging and dropping a starting component like a flange. We need to pick a size, say OK to some of the options for the route, and then we can actually go in and drag and drop another flange at the end of the route. And pick another size there. The 3D sketch gets started automatically. We can drag the starting lines around, maybe even start up the line command and draw additional segments. We get pipe segments from the straight lines and we get elbows created where we have sharp corners. Just hit the tab key to change direction. But the auto route tool works great too. We just need to select the two endpoints and then we can right click and jump through the alternatives. Find one we like. That one looks good. Even if we start up the dimension tool, it will dimension out to the virtual sharp. That makes math easier. You know how I love to use SOLIDWORKS to keep from having to do math. Give me an R. Give me an O. Give me a U. Give me a T. Give me an ING. What's it spell? Routing. What else scares people? Usually people ask about the routing library. How do we encourage people here? Well, SOLIDWORKS does provide a nice library of components to get started with routing. But I think we need to be upfront with people that it will not have all the components that they will need. If they don't already have the components modeled, then there are so many places like 3D Content Central and GrabCAD with tons of different files. We just need to get the files ready to use in routing. We can even use the existing files in the library as good examples. Is this where we would use the routing component wizard to add all the routing features that we need and, and get them ready to use? Yep, I usually like to go ahead and have all the different configurations or sizes of the parts already created before we run them through the wizard. Just like with a lot of other SOLIDWORKS tools, start out with a simple part and get some experience with the wizard. Let me show you how it works. First, we need to open a part in SOLIDWORKS. Let's run this flange through the wizard. One way to start the wizard is to find it down through the routing menu. Once you've used it a few times, you get in the groove. The tool tries to tell you what it needs based on our choices at the beginning of the wizard. So if we go to the routing component wizard, 
We can choose piping and then the end flange. The tool will not only tell you what type of connection points you need, it will help you add them. The C point needs a point and a plane to define where the pipe connects to the flange. We can reverse the direction to show which way the pipe leaves the flange. It's pretty easy. The R point just needs a point. So the C point is where the flange connects to the pipe and the R point is where the route attaches to the sketch. Some components may need some additional geometry, like an axis, so we can rotate it around as we add it to the assembly. A good example of this would be a clip that we might use in an electrical route. So we can add these axes here. The next things are mate references. Mate references are awesome. People should use them for their regular assemblies. For routing, it's what helps components snap into place when we drag and drop them in from the library. Dragging and dropping shouldn't be scary. The tool does one last check to make sure we have everything we need before working on the configurations. If we already have different sizes pre-created, then this step should be easy. There are some routing properties that we need to control through the design table, but we can come in and add them automatically. The next step is component attributes. Just think of custom properties. If we haven't already defined them beforehand, then we can add them here. The next thing we need to do is just save it to the library location. Yeah, one thing I always try to recommend to people is, is to set up a, a common location where everyone in the company can access the same components. We don't really like the idea of each user having their own library um, that they have to maintain. I wish people would realize that it probably wasn't a good idea to save any custom files to, you know, places like C program files or C program data. How many times have we gotten the call where people are missing files after they or their IT team upgraded their SolidWorks version and deleted the old version all and lost all their files? Ugh, I hate that too. So what's next on our list? Routing settings in general worry some people. There are just so many of them. Are there some that you might want to point out? Definitely. I can show you some of my favorites. Is it weird to say I have favorites? Oh well. The first thing to realize is that we have different options scattered around in a few different locations. We will look in the regular tools, options, system options, and routing location first. We already pointed out that dragging and dropping is something that everyone should be able to do. The first two options in this list deal with what happens when we drag and drop things. These are great. Automatically creating sketch fillets is what helps create the elbows in our pipe routes. I typically don't add dimensions to the short sections of pipe that get added when you drag and drop a flange, but it is an option. The next one we need to look deeper into is going to be whether we save the route assembly or route parts internally or externally. I guess that depends on how you want to handle your files. I typically will use external assemblies, which will actually create a file for the assembly on our hard drive, but go with internally saving all the pipe segments and cable sections. Even with a fairly simple pipe route, think of how many different lengths of pipe we might have. Using the triad option to rotate components when you drag and drop them in is nice if you rotate components all the time. But it's also very easy to use some of the other tools to rotate components after the fact if you only need to do this every once in a while. 
if we look at the routing file locations, it really just wants to point us to the routing library manager. So once there, we can define where our design library or routing library is located. We have locations where SOLIDWORKS looks for different files, like which assembly template to use, and maybe another option to look at what electrical components have been run through our routing component wizard. We have tools to define our available wires for our electrical routes too. Let's go routing, let's go. Let's go routing, let's go. You okay, David? Yeah, I'm just getting into the routing spirit. Cool. I do get into a routing mood after I get a few routes created and start getting into the flow. So I went through the what's new information for the past few years, and there are some great new enhancements that have come out recently. SOLIDWORKS 2017 gave us enhancements for better auto routing and error checking along with enhancements for exploded views of routes and for flattening of electrical routes. Imagine getting a flat pattern of your route just like you're getting a flat pattern of a sheet metal part. Except with the route, you can get all of the connector and wire information for the route. Yep, that's pretty cool. In SOLIDWORKS 2018, there are even more enhancements for the flattened route, but also some great enhancements for the component library wizard and the covering library wizard. SOLIDWORKS 2019 brought us more options for the coverings library and better performance in the routing library manager in general. We also have a new set of examples for inline components that we can drag into the middle of a route. They include a boot, a wide junction, and a tag for electrical routes. In SOLIDWORKS 2020, we have the ability to create multiple connection points in the same part. This gives us even more options for displaying the individual wires of the routes more accurately. We can set the mass and density of cables and wires to allow us to have better overall weight calculations for our electrical route assemblies. There are some new options for adding splices to our wires without having to actually add a splice component. Now, in SOLIDWORKS 2021, there are several enhancements for drawings that we might create for our route assemblies. There are more controls and options for things like connector tables and bill of materials. SOLIDWORKS 2021 has some interesting enhancements for running multiple wires through the same clip. We've been able to do that for a while now, but now it's much easier and better. I just don't know that people use clips to their full potential. Let me show you some examples. So I'm going to go in and close some of this stuff out and open up another assembly where I've already got a route started. We got the auto route tool that we can use. We can come in and click on the point on the connector and then just go through and click on the clips axes. As we go through to the other side, we can continue with a few more axes. Click, click, click. And then finish back up with the connector on the other side. That's easy, right? Those clips all existed beforehand in the assembly. But what if I need to add a clip while I'm actually routing? That's pretty easy too. Let's start the route again. I'm going to drag and drop a connector in. And that gets our route started. We just have to say OK to some of the options for our route. Again, it automatically starts us in the auto route tool. I'm going to come in and select the point on the end of the connector. Come over to my design library, find the clip that I want to use and drag and drop it in the assembly. I'm going to use the shift and the arrow keys to rotate it. Remember the axis that we used in the component wizard to set up rotation. That's what that's for. 
So as I drag and drop another one in, shift and arrows to rotate around, and it's going to automatically route the cable and wire through those clips. That looks pretty easy. Now for some of the new stuff in SOLIDWORKS 2021. What if we want to run wires through the same clip? We've been able to do this before, but we've got a much easier option now. If I come in and right click on the route, we can edit the route. And then we're going to use the route and edit through clip tool. All we have to do is pick the axis on the clip and then the two segments that we want to run through the clip. Very easy. We've got the auto arrange option and that works great. We can merge routes into a single route or we can manually offset routes by choosing a distance between them. So much easier. So let's take a closer look at how this wire looks as it passes through the clip. You can see it nice and evenly spaced as it goes through the clips there. It looks beautiful. There is one more thing that I think we need to make sure that people know how to use. It can help with uh, regular assemblies or routings. Ta-da! Display states. If we need to hide a portion of the assembly so it's easier to work on other sections, the display states is the way to go. David, I totally agree. I wonder how many people use them. Routing does have an interesting way to combine another command nicely too. Let me show you how it works. If we come in and flip over to a different assembly, I'm going to come in and control select on a couple of components and use the isolate command. It's going to come in and show those two components and hide everything else. That's cool, but with routing, if we go in and isolate on just the route, we have some additional options for what we can display. We can pick the route itself or select another option for showing components near the route. Right inside the isolate command, we can create a display state for the current display. Now it is super easy to move around the assembly and not have anything in the way when we want to look at certain parts of the assembly. I got a couple other display states already created, some with everything hidden and just showing the enclosure, some with the enclosure and the circuit board, but we can really easily move around the assembly with the use of the display states. Come in and add another display state, change its name, and maybe go in and change the transparency of the outer cover. We just click on the arrow, get to the four columns to control everything, and change the transparency. Easy as that. So display states can really help us out when we're wanting to simplify the way our assembly looks. So, we have shown you a few of the newer features in routing, plus a few places where people can get stuck as well. Just like with everything else, a little practice can really help. There are a number of different resources for getting started. There are some nice tutorials that already exist inside the help menu. And we have a number of videos on our YouTube channel. There are a ton of other resources on the Go Engineer website at www.goengineer.com. Let's take a look at a few. So if we look under the training menu, we have a course catalog. There is anything from the SOLIDWORKS Essentials course, down through surfacing and mold design, or even the two routing classes, one on piping and tubing, and the other for electrical routes. And this is just for the SOLIDWORKS CAD section. We have other sections for simulation, technical communication, electrical and PCB, CAM and PDM. We have regular classroom style classes, instructor led online classes, or the new self paced classes where you have 30 days to go through the videos, complete the exercises, or even have access to our instruction support team in case you get stuck along the way. Just add them to your cart. 
Thanks for watching our video. This is Tony Riggs and David Kersley from Go Engineer. We hope that you're not afraid, but more excited to start working with SOLIDWORKS routing for either your pipe, tubing, HVAC, cable tray, or electrical wire and cable routes. Just remember to drag and drop.